Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, there's no place we'd rather be than right here, right now with you. It's a great day to be in the kingdom because you're on the winning side and you've tuned in to Hope Today and it's going to be a great day in Jesus' name. I am J. Anthony Gilbert alongside with Pastor Amy Schaefer. So good to be back with you. In your great, big, booming, happy voice, Jay, Come it's on, great somebody. to be with you. And I am so happy to be with you. You know, there is a love-hate relationship, even with the word happy. I personally fight for happy. Does Jesus want us to be happy? Where did Jesus get his theology on happiness? And what does this mean for people today? This book by our dear friend, uh, Mike Hayes and Dr. Jeffrey Garner, Real Happy, is about one teacher who changed all of that. How from a nameless hillside, he redefined and redistributed happiness and how his path and words take us on a journey from unlucky to happy Jay. If there's ever a program you're going to want yes. to watch, it's today. For me, this is a book of the year. And Amen. so I cannot wait until our dear friend and author, Mike Hayes, unpacks yeah. this word, happy. Come on, somebody. And listen, we're, we're going to learn what genuine happiness is and if it's something that can be achieved or not. We're also going to examine Jesus' message on the Beatitudes and break down how they apply to us today. And we're also going to be sharing our thoughts on this one question. Does God desire for us to truly be happy? You know, I think it's time for us <laughs> to get on our happy. Come on, somebody. For real. I mean, we're, it, we're, the world is looking at us, Jay. That's right. The lost, the hurting, the broken, they're looking at the sons and daughters of God. Amen. And what do they see? What do they hear us saying? What do we sound like? What do we look like? I think it's going to be really important that we actually grasp these be attitudes today. And I think it's important as well because a lot of time, even in the church, ladies and gentlemen, we come to church with our pruned face on. The Bible says, I will enter his gates. Come on. Come on. With thanksgiving in my heart, into his courts with praise. There was a song we sing, I will say this is the day the Lord has made. I will <laughs> rejoice and be glad. And you need to make a decision right now before you hear about the book or anything else. I'm going to get my happy face on and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to go out and promote the happiness because you know what? We are in the kingdom of God, Pastor Amy. That's right. We should be enjoying each and every day because even if it's a bad day, it's a great day in the kingdom because all things are working together for, for our, good. our good. That is so true. And our next guest is a pastor and author and a dear friend of Cornerstone Television who has a desire to help people find true joy and happiness. And in his new book, Real Happy, Jesus' Surprising Path to Genuine Joy, Mike Hayes examines what genuine happiness is and whether or not it's something that can actually be achieved. Let's go, Mike, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, Amy, so good to be with you today. Nice to meet Jay, a uh, great energy, Jay, and uh, what a voice. So, uh, Thank you, you know, you have to step up to be side by side with Amy. She is the Katie Keurig of the body of Christ. You know, I'm doing and my she's best, the sir. Best she does. Thank you, Mike. I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> okay, Mike, uh, my husband and I and, and some members of our church were with you in Israel when you were teaching, not the first time, but, you know, the second or third time you were in Israel, when you got the revelation sitting on an unnamed hillside just, what, north of Galilee, Tell us about that moment in time where Jesus did a TED Talk or where Jesus unpacked his master class. Well, uh, I, it'd be my joy. I think uh, about six years ago, and I will say none of us had any idea, I certainly didn't, what we were about to face in the world for the next five years or so with COVID and everything else involved. But uh, I had finished teaching on the Hill of Beatitudes, on the Beatitudes and Jesus' message. And that day was an especially uh, like softly broken day. I finished talking about offense and, uh, and, and the impossibility of being happy with offense. And, and, uh, and everybody was just sort of uh, 
including me, just sort of uh, in a worshipful kind of weepy mode. And the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and said, I want you to write a book on this, on happiness. And to be honest, my first thought was, uh, why don't you give me something really important? I mean, you know, isn't happiness trivial to you? You're not really interested. You're interested in our holiness, but happiness is not really something on your, well, it was, I was so wrong. So I took that assignment and started the research to write it. And I can honestly tell you, Amy and Jay, that this book, this is my eighth book, but this book has changed my life more than any I've ever written. Um, I, I didn't know that happiness was so important to God, our happiness. You know, there was a young man recently that was uh, in a little uh, Bible study with Dr. Jeff, my co-author that did the research uh, for us early on, and then I, I made him a co-author. He's such a brilliant man. I love him. Uh, he was teaching some of the principles that is kind of beta testing it. And a young man got up and left the room and he came back in a few minutes later and he'd obviously been crying. So uh, Jeff asked him afterwards, uh, Andy, why did you leave? And he said, you know, I was so overcome because I've spent 40 years of my life trying to make God happy with me. I didn't know he wanted me to be happy in him. Mm. And that's one of the great revelations wow. that we miss. And I'll just tell you guys, I love the church. The church is the only hope of the world. But I think the church overall has done a lot better job presenting things like repentance and uh, baptism and the Trinity and all these doctrines that we present. And I don't think we've done as good a job as we should have in presenting to the world absolute overflowing joy and happiness when we come from the presence of the Lord. That's what the world is looking for. And the picture of misery, you know, when I started uh, pushing this book on the air, I started getting blasted by Pharisees. And the first one who wrote was about four paragraphs that he responded on Instagram. He was a theologian and his, his, his general idea was, God wants us holy. God doesn't want us happy. And then he called me everything but a good man. And my one of my teammates, the uh, sales director for our ministry, called me and she said, what do you want to do about this post? And I said, like it. That's what I did. I gave it a thumbs up. I love that because that's the expected response from religious people. They think God wants us holy and not happy. I don't believe it's one or the other. Our happiness is a result of us knowing the source of our holiness. Amen. See, Jesus said this, Amy and, and Jay, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I believe one builds on the other. Mm. If you don't solve the righteousness issue, and know that you are free from sin and not condemned and Jesus is crazy in love with you, then the peace and joy never comes because you haven't solved the first equation, which is am I and do I have righteous standing before the Lord? And because of the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice, we absolutely do. And that's why I'm so happy. And that's exactly what we want to unpack. In this book, you take the Beatitudes and you bring it back to the original meaning. In our translation, we read it are blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart. But you say that blessed is not the actual translation that it should be. Can you unpack that for us? That word was changed. Uh, I'm not going to say there was an agenda to that, but in about the 1500s, that word was changed to blessed are. It's a much more religious and spiritual sounding word, I guess. But let me go right to the scene and tell you where the revelation starts on this. In Jesus' day, you remember that the world had been dominated by the Greek empire. It had fallen and the Romans took their place. 
but there was still a lot of Greek culture remaining. And one of the things that remained is most of the people in Jesus' day understood Greek. It had been the dominant language of the region for hundreds of years. And so what remained was that there were certain words that they still used, and one of them was the word makarios. Makarios is a Greek word that means overflowing, unbelievable happiness and joy. But here's the thing. The Greeks used it as a word for the, their highest word for happiness, but that word only applied to the gods. The, Greek, the Greeks had many gods, and, and happiness was reserved for the gods, not the common people. We couldn't be that kind of happy. But Jesus looks out over the hillside to simple farmers and peasants and housewives and students and foreigners and simple people and says to them, Makarios are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he didn't use the Aramaic word that he spoke as his native tongue. He used the word Makarios, which means joyfully happy, a happiness formerly only reserved for the gods. You can have it. And he starts, Amy and Jay, with the first beatitude, which absolutely needs a rework in the translation. Because the modern translation that says, blessed are the poor in spirit, mm -hmm. actually gave birth to the vow of poverty that priests, monks, and so forth through the ages have lived because of that verse absolutely miss the meaning. Here's what it should say. Makarios, or joyfully happy, are those who are spiritually void or provide an empty place that I can fill. Mm. Then you'll be really happy. So what do we do? We don't understand that. So we think somehow God is pleased with poverty, and then because there's a basic desire in us to be happy, we start cramming every kind of thing in the world into our spirit. Bigger house, faster car, pretty women, all the stuff we want, we fill that emptiness with things that aren't designed to fill it. Then we wonder why we're not happy. So happiness, real happiness starts with an emptying out. Get the stuff out of your spirit that doesn't belong because it's only physical. Happiness is a spiritual. You know, we are in a very religious part of the world here. The religious roots grow deep. And it's like the more solemn, the more serious, uh, the more holy you are. And so what you are unpacking today is a truth that I believe will set people free. Now, when my husband and I and our church part of our church in Israel heard you teaching about meekness. I mean, our, our whole world was shifted. Can you talk about blessed or real happy are the meek? Well, I'll have to tell you on a little personal note, guys, uh, this is the one of the Beatitudes that changed my life the most. Because growing up, uh, somehow, I loved Jesus, and I wanted to see him as really strong and great, like a superhero. And somehow, meek was associated with weak for me. And I didn't like the fact that they would say Jesus was meek. Then I came to understand in the Beatitudes, what he said was, you'll be really happy, Makarios happy. You'll be really happy if you learn to be strong but under control. Meekness is strength under control. And the, the meaning came originally, the use of the word came originally from the days of the Romans who were the first ones in ancient times to use horses in battle. And so they went to Spain and they bred the most powerful horses they could breed. But the real test was not that this horse is strong, but when he gets with a rider on his back in the den of battle, can he stay under control? Strength under control in the time of battle. Wow. That's meekness. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, if you are strong but under control, you will be the happiest. Mm -hmm. 
So this has changed my life because we concentrate a lot on being strong in our society, but we don't concentrate as much on being under control. Under control means I have the power in this situation that I could squash you like a bug, but instead I'm gonna love you and treat you well, take it on the chin, and I'm gonna keep my strength under control. Now, when you look at it that way, then it fits Jesus' life. He was the strongest man I've ever known, but was always under control. That is so powerful and life transforming. And it, it really ties into the next beatitude. I just want to address in this culture where at campuses there are groups right now, you know, fighting against Israel. And we have the situation in Israel and Hamas and Gaza and Palestine's and, and politically there is a, a charge. What would Jesus say about blessed or real happy are the peacemakers. How important is that in this day and hour? Well, it's, it's really important in what we see unfolding on campuses and the unrest really around the world. Why are Jewish people so easy to hate? 470% Jewish hatred is up in the last 30 days around the world. Mm. What is it that Jews as a whole do or have done that make them so vulnerable to hatred. And of course, I think there's a demonic ploy behind it all, but if I could, I don't wanna pull rank on anybody, but with due respect, I have experience in the Middle East. I've been to Gaza, I've been to the West Bank. I've spent time in Israel. I've spoken in churches with believers in uh, Gaza who are uh, Palestinians. So this is a very complicated problem, but the bottom line is we're all looking for who to blame. And I did a, a talk uh, last week on that, and I listed uh, the top five uh, that are to blame, and Israel's not in the top five. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 other than the devil, uh, Iran is at the top, and, uh, and Hezbollah and uh, Hamas and the terrorist organizations that Iran funds are right there around second. And then people who don't know what they're talking about, frankly, uh, that get in the way now and are disrupting education and things on campus and don't know what they're doing, just looking for a cause, but don't really take the time to educate themselves. So here's the thing, guys. Jesus said, you'll be happy if you are a peacemaker and you'll be called the children of God. So right now we focus so much on race, you're called black or you're called white or you're called Palestinian or you're called Israeli or whatever the latest uh, skirmish is. But in fact, our goal should be to be called the children of God. And to do that, we have to be peacemakers. Mm -hmm. And guys, I wanna point out that on campuses, when police surround rioters over the cause, they are attempting to be peacekeepers, but there's a difference in peacekeeping and peacemaking. Mm -hmm. Peacemaking demands humility, it demands control, it demands understanding. Peacemaking demands action. So there's not a lot to be gained by blaming in these kinds of situations. There's much more to be gained by peacemaking. And on Sunday was Pentecost Sunday that we all celebrated across the country. And this is a point that I could make that's really fresh in my spirit. I spoke a Sunday here in Dallas and the Pentecost story, not from the book of Acts, but John in chapter 20, John the beloved wrote from his perspective, they were behind locked doors and Jesus walked into the room through the wall or through the door with his resurrected body. And the first thing he said was, peace be unto you. And I'm gonna tell you guys, as simple as it sounds, peacemakers begin with the declaration, peace be unto you. We have to start speaking peace. We speak blame, 
We speak reasons. We speak what side we're on. But if we're going to be children of God and be happy, we have to speak peace. Powerful, powerful word. Mike, I want to ask you to pray. Pray for those right now who are uh, mourning the loss of a loved one, who have lost a job, who have just got a diagnosis from the doctor, who are having strong, heavy relational issues. Will you pray for them today that they will truly get the revelation of this message that Jesus had for us, his people? Absolutely, and there's a there's a parable for that. Happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And the revelation in that one is that receiving the comfort of Jesus is going to be so much greater than what caused you to mourn that you're going to be really happy right in the midst of what caused you to mourn. That's how powerful the peace and the comfort of Jesus is. Father, I thank you for our audience today. And I understand that in an audience this broad that there could be all kinds watching today. Some are in the toughest place they've ever been in their lives. Let your comfort come, Lord, and let us be declarers of your love and your peace and your covering and your comfort in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Mike, thank you for the gift and the revelation of this book. It truly is and I don't say this lightly, life transforming, life altering. It is, as I've said earlier, a book of the year for me. And we just bless you, bless this book. And we expect many more to come. You can pick up this book at imrealhappy.com. You can go to Amazon or you can find the link um, at our website. Mike, you're the best. Buck and I love you dearly. Thank you, Jay and Amy. It's nice to be with you today. Stay with us because when we return in 60 seconds, we'll share our final thoughts on whether or not God does indeed desire for our lives to be filled with true joy. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Well, if you've been tuning in or you're just tuning in, I want to encourage you that you go back again and listen to everything that Dr. Mike Hayes shared. Listen, if you are looking for joy, if you're looking to find out how to tap into that joy, you have missed it if you didn't get it. And if you got it, you need to go back and digest a little bit more of what it is. But we always like to give you a scripture as well. In John 10, 10, it says, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. You know, Pastor Amy, as he was talking, uh, something that really came alive to me. I think it's so important. A lot of people think that happiness, joy, that it's just like, okay, I'm just going to claim my joy and happiness. But if you notice something, which I think was so profound, which you did a great job, and I'm telling you, go back, listen to it again, and get your hands on this mm -hmm. book, because it is very, very profound. Mm -hmm. It's important that we understand there was a condition. We had to do something. Blessed are those. And then they had a condition, and then they would get it. You know, so it, it's not just, well, I'm just going to claim joy. You've got to be poor in spirit. You have to be a peacemaker. You have to learn how to do these things in the kingdom. And this book helps us to have a kingdom way of thinking so then joy and happiness can be ours. Well, I think that is huge because, I mean, just reread this, right? Yeah. Real happy are those who are poor in spirit. Real happy are those who are mourned. Real happy are those who are me. I mean, yeah. real happy are those who are merciful. When we do what God says, truly 
you will find happiness and a peace that we're trying to fill our lives with all of this fake yep. junk. It's like fake food, fake news, fake life, fake, it, it's all visual, it's all surface. But what's happening in the real you, it's like when Jesus was first introduced to the world and he was being baptized and God the Father said, you're my beloved son. Yeah. Like I'm real happy with you. And it's like before we do anything, we have to be. That's right. We have to be a daughter, a beloved daughter, a beloved son of God. And that is with that revelation will bring you real happy in your Amen. life. Well, like he said too, the righteousness, peace, and joy. You have to do it God's way, which is what the Beatitudes is all about. I think it's amazing. I, what did you call it? I think you said that, it, uh, maybe Dr. Mike called it. That's basically Jesus uh, it's his TED, TED Talk. talk. That he came Mike, up. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Mike said that. It's his, he had this little moment, his first message, yeah. and it was this little glimpse of a TED Talk. Wow. But it ends up being a master class for us that when we unpack it, to be honest, I've read over it. I just read through yeah. it. I've, I've read it a million times. It's posted on my wall. But I never really unpacked verse by verse in the original text what it meant. And Jay, how wow. life transforming it is. That is really outstanding. You know, that's why you need to get your hands on that book, Real Happy. It's an exegetical study on the Beatitudes, which simply means pulling out what the original writer intended in the text. Don't just glance over it. Your joy is determined about how well you can apply the Word of God in that area. And so I want to encourage you, if you need prayer for anything, pick up your phone right now. Maybe you're battling with joy. Maybe you're battling to find you're happy. Mm -hmm. Dial that number right now, 888-665-4483. Joy is available to you. And if this message has been a blessing to you, we want to encourage you to get your hands on that and go deeper into the Word of God. You know, joy is the very thing that keeps a pep in your step and puts the effervescence in your life and keeps the bubbly flowing through your spirit. <laughs> it's important that you walk in joy and that you seize your happy today. Go and enjoy the joy of the Lord as you go forward in Jesus' name.